What's up, everybody? It's Brandon, and I'm back with another Top 5 Thursday. This is the early shit edition. Called into work today because I tried to drive in the snowstorm we got, and I about wrecked. <laughs> and I found myself kind of in an epiphany where I was like, man, why am I really doing this? I'm doing this so I don't have a second occurrence in one week that I have to give, by the way, that I would feel guilty about. And then I thought about what my job entails, which is driving the entire day. It's not just to and from, I deliver tires. So <laughs> here I am saying fuck this as a whole for today. And instead, I'm gonna get my lazy ass to doing this Top 5 Thursday. And today's Top 5 Thursday goes out to Amber J. Oakley. So I know I've been trying to get one of your top fives on here, so it's only right I finally do. So I'm doing hers, which is top five gang movies. I don't know if she meant like gangster movies or just any movie with a gang. I guess it's any movie with a gang. So I guess that's kind of what I did. Uh, number five. When I'm not lazy, I actually get the movies out because I have damn near every movie I throw on this list, any of these lists. Um, Gangs in New York, man. This one is a solid, solid gang movie. I'm sure you've seen it. If you haven't, you need to fix it. It's got an amazing cast with Cameron Diaz. Yeah, she's the front runner. No, I'm just playing. She's more of the co-star, but she's great. Um, Daniel Day-Lewis, <clears throat> who some, Rodney, I think, even considers maybe the greatest actor of all time. Don't hold me to that. And then Leonardo DiCaprio, who everybody loves. Another reason to see it. And it's not just the big names, it's also the performances. Because sometimes, you know, the names don't live up to what they should have. And this movie definitely does that, as they all have amazing performances. You see all those, that 10 up there, it's kind of blocked off. Uh, there's Academy Awards galore for this movie, and there's a reason for that. Because this movie is downright epic. But it also isn't necessarily that movie, you know, where the average moviegoer is like, oh, is an it was nominated for how many Academy Awards? It actually means I probably won't like it because it's almost like too uptight. You know, it's more in tune with the filmmaking aspect rather than the exciting aspect. This movie's long, but it's not drawn out. It's got some great acting in it that, you know, appeases these people, the Academy Award peeps. But it also, beyond that, is just downright entertaining for anybody it's got great storytelling. It's got a great build to it. I mean, just the whole movie, dude, the way it's shot. It's just wonderfully done. If you haven't seen Gangs in New York, you need to hop on that. And this was, uh, you got to think back. This is back when we weren't really sure about Lil Leo yet. This is one of, you know, those roles that was just like, okay, he had Titanic. That was pretty cool. That was a love story. But I got to admit, low-key, I like that movie. But then he kept putting out little more movies like this over and over again. And this is one of those that just solidify that. It's like, okay, man, like we can't deny this dude's greatness anymore. Or at least it was a stepping stone in that direction. It was hard for people to turn the other cheek and look at him just as like, you know, eye candy for women at that point. And now we all love him, admit it. Big movie right here for that. And it's, you know, it's kind of fun to see a little bit of a younger Leo when he's kind of coming into that his own what we know him as today. Great movie. Great movie at number five. At number four, we got A History of Violence. This one's a little underrated. And yes, it does have to do with the gang. You got Vigo Mortensen, who's uh, in his hometown. They got these people coming up to him, calling him, uh, you know, a certain name that he's kind of just like, what, what? Like, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, sir. You got the wrong guy. And us as the audience, like, what? they got the wrong guy. I know this guy. I've been following him the whole time. He's a good man. And you're kind of left to wonder, like, is he actually this guy? Have we been duped? Or is he the other guy, family man? And, uh, you know, a history of violence. Maybe that gives it away. Maybe that, you know, sends you <laughs> on, uh, you know, the wrong trail where you're like, okay, I see what they're doing here. It is called a history of violence. There must have been one. But, you know, it's up for you to decide. I really don't want to give too, too much away with this one because a bunch of people actually haven't seen it. But it's really well acted. It's kind of slow paced. But it's not like that boring slow pace because you're always wondering, like, 
there's something here, isn't there? Like, even if he isn't the guy that these people are coming up that are violent, dangerous people are saying, it's still, you're like, there's got to be something to this, or he's got a mistaken identity and he's going to have to fight for his life, maybe protect his family. And there's not a lot of violence in this one, but when it does get violent, it does get downright violent. A History of Violence, I mean, it's in the fucking title, is a really, really good movie that, you know, has a gang in it. And, yeah. Pretty dope, pretty dope flick. Gotta watch that shit. Um, I'll go ahead and say it. I think a lot of people would love to see The Godfather in this list. I love The Godfather to an extent, but I more or less just respect the shit out of it. They're not like my favorite movies. I grew up watching them to the point where I'd want to go crazy because I'd always be at my grandma and grandpa's house and my grandpa always had The Godfather playing. I respect those movies now. I really enjoy them, but they wouldn't be in my top five personally. And another one that wouldn't be is Goodfellas. Oh, my God. I do love Goodfellas, but I love all these movies a little bit more. And the reason I'm bringing those up is because this movie kind of goes hand in hand with that. And it's more just straight to the point mob movie. And people would actually probably rank this the worst out of, you know, those kind of flicks. Out of the two I named, you know, the Juggernauts, Goodfellas, Godfather. But Casino is just a cut above for me. I think Casino is just a little better. I don't know. That's just me. I see more people lean more towards Goodfellas. That's always the one it's compared to. And Goodfellas seems to come out on top for people a little bit more. I don't know. Something about, like, I don't know, man. I can admit Pesci maybe is a little better in Goodfellas. But I'm a huge Robert De Niro fan. As much as he's in Goodfellas, I kind of like him as, like, the straightforward lead a little more. And Pesci's still amazing in this movie. Sharon Stone is to die for in this movie. She's fucking great. Um, and just the casino atmosphere, man, with the gangster shit going on in there. Like, I just like that for whatever reason that appeals to me. And I like kind of how we get the Tarantino like vibe where it starts off with like kind of like the ending and you're like, what happened? Because, like, you know, fucking De Niro's car blew up and all that other shit it was wired. And it kind of lets you see the pieces fall where they may. And you're like, damn, like what? Like you're just you're always on the edge of your seat, even though it's so long where you're like, what led to this point? And what you're seeing led what led to that point is just amazing storytelling and amazing movie with great performances. And it's I even had this on one of the top five's most disturbing scenes, the bat scene at the end of it with the brothers and Joe Pesci, that scene. I don't need to go into great detail because I went into great detail on that top five, but it just, it's devastating to me every time I watch it. Goodfellas uh, has a little bit more. It gets under my skin a little more to go with all the great storytelling, all the great acting. It's, it's an amazing movie. I like Goodfellas, not Goodfellas, Casino, just a little bit more. Sorry if I get that mixed up. <laughs> I might have been like, I like Goodfellas a little more. Like, no, Brandon, Casino, Casino, Casino is my number three. And number two, I have a hood movie. That's right. And it's not Boys Boys in the Hood, although I do love that one, too. Y'all might be a little disappointed that's not on this list. It's Menace to Society. And I do have it on a DVD, actually, but it's in, like, a four-pack. It's in the other room with my wife, who I think might still be sleeping. <laughs> so I was just like, eh, fuck it. I'll just talk about it. Um, Menace to Society and Boys in the Hood. Now, I feel like Menace to Society could be maybe considered the second best hood movie, but to me, it's more the first, and I think it's more of my style. I mean, as much as I love Boys in the Hood, it's sad as fuck, dude. Rick, like, I want to cry almost every time I watch it. It's heartbreaking, dude. It's just, it's almost as heartbreaking as more <laughs> chestnut with hair. It just don't look right to me. But... <sighs> God, man, Men's Society is just a little bit more raw and gritty and, I guess, real. You know what I mean? Like, almost like it's not trying to shove the message down your throat, which I'm not saying Boys in the Hood necessarily does that, but there's times where it does kind of feel like, like the music kicks in where it's kind of like, and this is why you don't do this in the hood. Like, it just feels more like, like it has a message, but it's like, you know, like, overly trying to convey it. Like, it's almost like, don't you see we have a message? Almost like they're trying too hard in a few spots. Where Menace Society is more raw and gritty. 
and you don't necessarily feel like that. But if you know you're not a dumbass and you can kind of walk away from the movie, you can peel. It's harder to peel those things from men's society. But if you look hard enough, they're there. And I think it's a little more cerebral in that extent. And O Dog, I mean that motherfucker, you you <laughs> that dude is a monster in that movie. Like I mean, you're just like good God. Can you imagine having a friend like that? And I, I don't know, it just, when I watch that movie, it feels a little more natural, you know what I mean? I think it's aged a little better in that regard, and I don't know, like I said, I think it's the more raw and gritty feeling of, like, it doesn't feel like a movie almost, whereas Boys in the Hood feels like it's structured in a way where the entire time, even though I'm having a blast, you're like, like, and this is why you don't kill people, kids. And when you're in the hood, make sure you find the right people. Like, you can almost feel like there should be, like, a narrator over top of it. It's not as forced in menace society. And I'm not shitting on Boys in the Hood. Amazing movie. But I'd give menace society, because of that and the wrong gritty feel, a slight, a slight nudge above. I've always liked it just a little bit more. And at number one... We have a Bronx Tale, probably De Niro's most underrated flick, I'd say, and one of my favorite, if not my favorite, De Niro flicks. Like, I'm just a sucker for the dad that's in a bad situation, a.k.a., you know, kind of the hood atmosphere, that just goes to bat for his son. Like, he's working his nine to five. He ain't got a good job, but all he cares about is put money and food on the table so in the right in the right way so his kid cannot live the way he did. He's trying his best. I'm a sucker for that role. And then when you put what is probably my favorite actor in that role, I mean, it only helps it, right? Like, A Bronx Tale is a fucking blast to me. But although a blast, other, unless you're talking about gunshots, it's kind of a weird way of putting it. But you know what I mean. Every time I finish watching it, it's not like, this was a, such a fun time, but it's like a thanker puts you in a certain mood it really showcases how things go about in these kind of situations also in kind of a natural way where it doesn't feel forced and then the guy uh well, i forget his name every time but i don't even know how to pronounce it uh chaz palmentary palmentary whatever the hell his name is you know the guy from night the roxbury like you pet detective son of a bitch I'm talking about you grab my ass that guy yeah, he, uh, you know, before doing stupid roles like that, he was pretty good in movies like this here and there. He can be kind of an intimidating figure, but he has like a charm to him, and that really is showcased here times 10. Basically, Robert De Niro's son kind of runs into him, and he's like the head gangster in town. And that charm, dude, that gets so many people in these situations. It seems like the leader, you know, a leader gets there not just because they're evil. A lot of times it's because they're charismatic and they have a way about them. So a kid, being very impressionable, sees him and he's like, hey, would you like some food? Like, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to do this and this and this. Doesn't realize what he's getting himself into. Maybe like a couple weeks down the road, it's like, hey, I need you to do something for me. And then next thing you know, the kid's wrapped up in a lifestyle he doesn't need to be in. And Robert De Niro sees that, and he's got to somehow get through to his kid, and kids never want to listen, by saying, like, I know he seems good. I know this is this way, but I do not need you getting into it, not just with him, but with that gang. And it leads to, you know, just a great movie that has great storytelling that just really has you on the edge of your seat on, like, if, if this kid's going to see the right side or not. And De Niro and Chaz and even the kid in the movie – just give great performances. And A Bronx Tale, dude, is one I don't know why isn't talked about as much. I feel like I never hear this movie get brought up. You'd be talking about Rob De Niro, nobody will bring up A Bronx Tale. Like, good fellas. Even Casino. Fucking, you know, it's all the same shit, dude. What about A Bronx Tale, man? What about Cape Fear? What about the fucking Deer Hunter? I don't even hear that brought up. But A Bronx Tale, let's not get too far off subject. That's the movie I'm talking about here. And that movie is the shit. If you haven't seen A Bronx Tale and you're a fan of Robert De Niro, don't sleep like the rest of people are. Don't forget about it. I don't, which I don't know how you would. It's an unforgettable type of movie. And watch it. It's even got a great score on Rotten Tomatoes, which is like the critics' basis for shit. It's got a good score on IMDb, which is like the fans' basis for shit. But people, for whatever reason, do not talk about it. And it's a great fucking flick. Watch A Bronx Tale, please. 
or don't you know there's that too but all right guys this is this has been and this concludes my half awake top five thursday probably gonna go back to sleep maybe not i got a lot of shit to do gotta review some more movies for tomorrow if all goes as planned we got an interview with adam marcus tomorrow the director of jason goes to hell being a huge friday the 13th fan i'm all giddy all over like that adam is a good guy he's only been awesome the times we've talked with each other online so i'm looking forward to not doing it face to face like in person but face to face because you know (laughs) he'll be on the computer screen and we're actually having a conversation where we can see and hear and talk to each other rather than just kind of reading what each other says so that'll be nice for me that'll be nice for the other guys too well i think rodney's gonna be the only other person that's here i gotta hit him up because he said he's good but make sure to hit him up the day before (laughs) so that is today hopefully nothing has changed or anything like that if not let's not beat the guy up he is a busy man i know this to be true so uh Hopefully that's there for you guys tomorrow, and I got to get these interview questions up and watch these two other fucking movies. Working, working, working. Try and give y'all the best content possible. If y'all could just show some love. Yeah, I don't know. Which actually, you know, me not going to work today might have helped in a weird kind of way because I'm behind on too much shit. It ain't even my fault. It's just a stacked fucking week. And we might have another guest coming on very soon that's also very interesting if you're into the horror genre we're gonna keep trying to pile these up for you guys we appreciate it join box office banner movies check out the project louder network for all podcasts project louder which we are a part of um project louder.net would to be exact fucking spotify Podbean, we're all on there i think official box office banner is what we are on uh Spotify and Podbean, same thing for Instagram, official box office banner. YouTube, I think we're just box office banner. We left off the official part, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. If not, type in fucking official box office banner. Leave off the fucking part, or that's up to you. I don't know what you'll find when you, you know, put that in. But, yeah, check us out all those places. Subscribe, do these things. Please help us in the spirit of menace to society. We'll suck your dick. No, I'm just playing. But seriously, no, I'm playing. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know, man. Just help where you can, please, because we greatly appreciate it. Trying to grow this, not just for us, but also for you. Motherfucker, be there at the beginning. We're slowly gaining ground. We are. We're getting there. Thank you, Box Office Banner family. And thank you, Amber J. Oakley, for the top five suggestion. I had a lot of fun doing it, even if it seems like I'm half awake. We got you top five, though. Appreciate you. See y'all.